I'm Mike. Uh, I'm an uh, independent civil engineering consultant. I used to work for Unical Company, and I've been helping out with this project on drilling-induced vibration. Unfortunately, the phenomenon of drilling-induced vibration was first observed in a drilling riser failure for Unical Indonesia Company operating in the Macassar Strait. Uh, we became aware at that time that under certain circumstances, the rotation of the drill pipe inside the drilling riser could induce significant vibration of the drilling riser, which could lead to fatigue damage and eventually failure of the riser. Unical has been working with Bob Blevins to do computer models of the drill pipe and riser. And we reached the point with that modeling where in order to improve our understanding any further, we need direct measurement of the hydrodynamic forces and motions that are caused by the hydrodynamic interaction between the drill pipe and the riser. That's the purpose of the apparatus that you see behind me, is to make first direct measurement of the hydrodynamic forces, and second, to allow the riser to move and observe the patterns of motion that are caused by the rotation of the drill pipe. We expect that the results of these tests will allow us to improve our models and allow Unical and Unical Indonesia Company to develop better design guidelines and operational guidelines for drilling and production risers for deep water. Hi, I'm Bob Blevins, a consultant in acoustics and vibration. We're at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography's hydraulic lab where we're performing tests on drilling-induced vibration. Drilling-induced vibration is a phenomena of deep water drilling where it's been observed that at drilling at depths between 3,000 and 6,000 feet, the rotation of the drill pipe induces vibration of the surrounding riser. Amplitudes of up to one foot, peak to peak, have been observed in drilling. This uh, shortens the fatigue life of the riser and may cause its failure. To simulate this in, in the laboratory, what we've done is taken a full-scale section of the drill pipe and riser that's 38 inches long. We're going to measure the forces on the riser as the drill pi pipe turns, and we're going to allow the drill pipe to move flexibly in response to the forces that are imposed on it. The riser, the riser is supported on a four-bar linkage pendulum from an exterior rigid frame. There's a high-speed flow around the drill pipe in the direction of the drill pipe, but as you go outward, you can see that the flow actually recirculates back and forms a, a large vortex between the drill pipe and the riser. Also, between the close space in the small gap between the drill pipe and the riser in this position, there's high speed flow. The, the surface dimples down and there's low pressure between the drill pipe and the riser. Uh, the suction between the two means that the drill pipe is actually attracted to the riser and the riser is attracted to the drill pipe. My name is Charles Coffrin. I'm the head of the Hydraulics Laboratory at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. We were asked to participate in the physical portion of a study on 
drilling-induced vibration. And in order to measure both the um, forces and the motion, we built a test fixture. Uh, this test fixture is currently in the configuration for measuring the motions of the drill riser induced by um, the fluid interaction with the drill string. The riser is in the tank behind me, and it is su suspended on a three-dimensional four-bar linkage, which allows motion in both the X and Y uh, directions without altering the orientation in the, v in the Z direction. That is, the riser stays vertical. Um, I'll illustrate the uh, two degrees of freedom. In order to measure the forces on the riser, we attach the model riser, in this case, an 8.5 inch ID um, model, to a strain gauge fixture seen here, which is especially designed in order to measure the transverse force and the torque on the riser. Thank you. 